gentlemen, meine Freunde. Uh, welcome to the Gutenberg Printing Press. My name is Eva, and I'm an apprentice of Gutenberg himself. Perhaps you'd like to hear how Gutenberg's machine works? Ah, well, first you need to know the most important parts about it. Gutenberg invented not just the printing machine, but two other things as well. Gutenberg was a well-known goldsmith when he was a younger man. That means he works with gold, silver, tin, lead, lots of precious metals to do small, intricate projects. Like make these. They're small metal letters on little metal blocks, kind of like what you call a, a Lego. And so we'll take all of these pieces of metal type, as Gutenberg calls it, and we will put them together piece by piece by piece to form an entire page. Now, because Gutenberg is using metal instead of handwriting his pages, the water-based inks that we use to write, which slides off the end of the quill very well, also slides off the end of his metal type. It won't stick. So Gutenberg had to invent his own ink. His is one of the first oil-based inks. The oil he used is called linseed oil. It comes from a grain called flax. There's lots of flax growing in Germany. And that's also what we make our paper out of, uh, linen-based paper, uh, kind of like clothing, rather than the wood-based papers that you're used to. But we also use parchment and vellum or animal skins. So, step number one, or number eins, is setting the type. Now, if you were to look at a page like this, and you were to imagine that every letter, every space between the words, and every punctuation mark is a separate piece of metal type, like lots of different Legos, how many pieces do you think it would take to make that entire page? I'll give you a moment to think. Now, we call it the 42-line Bible. On average, there's about 60 pieces across per line, which means that every single page has about 2,500 to 3,000 pieces per page. Now, I have to set 3,000 pieces, but I also have to set these pieces backwards because it's like a stamp, yeah? You put it backwards so that it will print forward. And it's in Latin. There are no widely used German Bibles. The church is using a Bible called the Latin Vulgate. They've been using this Bible for a thousand years and they're not looking to change. So I have to learn to proofread in Latin. So this can take me hmm, five to seven hours, depending on how fast I'm moving. But once that's finished, the hardest part is over. And then I'll take these, called blotting stamps, dunk them into a bucket of ink, roll them together like this. And then we use them to roll ink across the top of the metal type, like this. It's a lot of work for your wrists. Thankfully for me, I get to use this. Some traveler came through and introduced it to me. Now, Gutenberg's ink, as I mentioned, was of his own invention, but he's a very secretive man, and he hasn't even told me the recipe. But I've done some snooping, and he goes to lanterns in the street at night, and he takes out that black soot on the window panes. And this is called carbon, and so he'll mix that all together in his ink. Uh, he uses things like sap from trees or turpentine as well, and he makes his concoction. But unlike all of the other inks, Gutenberg's ink is smudge free. That means that once we make the press on the page and once it dries, the ink won't smear. The oils from your fingers won't make it re-smudge. Brilliant. Now, we will take this thing. This is called the frisket. Holds all of the paper in place during the printing press. And now we'll put the frisket on top of this box called the casket or the coffin. And we'll slide it under the machine itself. Now, Gutenberg's machine was modeled after a vine or an oil press from Italy. That's why it has the frame with the corkscrews that you see here. But Gutenberg modified this bit. It's called the platen. You'll notice that as I turn the corkscrew, the platen doesn't turn with it. Why do you think that is? Yeah, for a very good reason. If the platen were to turn as it was pressing, it would bend the paper, uh, smear the ink, and I just spent seven hours setting up all of those pieces of type and making sure they are perfectly aligned. If it were turning and pressing, it would make them come out of alignment. We don't want that. So here's where the pressing part comes in. The platen pushes the paper into the type to make a print. And then, if we have a successful press, there will be the sound like a kiss. Ah. And then we have a page from the Gutenberg Bible. Now this page will hang up to dry for the whole day, 24 hours. And then, once it's finished, 
an apprentice who is trained as a scribe will go through and will add all of these accent letters that you might see here. So there's large accent letters. That's to show the start of a new section. This is 1 Samuel chapter 25 through chapter 26. Once the Bible is all put together, the person who buys it will take it separately to an illuminator to add all of these beautiful designs there. So there's actual gold pressed onto the page, which is why we call it illuminations, as well as the fact that it illuminates the meaning of the page in your mind. And that's all done based on your personal preference of how, what you want illuminated, a specific page, but also how much money you have. So if you don't have a lot of money, you don't get a lot of illumination. And that's how we make our Gutenberg Bibles. I hope you'll come by Gutenberg's workshop one day and buy one yourself. Auf Wiedersehen in meine Freunde.